Does this ever happen to you? Ugh, my chest feel horrible today. I should have got to the club earlier so I could get my full 45 minute routine in. Maybe I should have stayed up so late last night practicing. I'm not gonna touch my horn for a couple days after this. In today's lesson, we're going to talk about how to have more good days on the horn and fewer days where our chops feel like an unmitigated dumpster fire. everyone welcome back to these online lessons with me sean bell we missed last week i had a pretty big project due in another area of my work as a musician and that had to take precedent but we're back here doing some online lessons and today i thought we would cover a topic that most brass players deal with all of us can probably report to sometimes having the occasional bad embouchure day or bad chop day um, this is part of being a brass player. You know, the instrument can be a little fickle. Some days it feels great, some days not so much. Our goal, though, is to be more on the side of feeling good or at least consistent all the time and having few of those outlier days. We don't want to have too many of those because that's really going to disrupt our practice and our performance. Now, the things that we're going to talk about today are things that have been successful for my playing. And these might not be universal, but I think they do offer some insight that all of us can think about. Now, when I was probably working, you know, on kind of getting my stuff together in my kind of late teens, early 20s, and even close to getting into my 30s, I would definitely report as having like a bad chop day, probably as much as once a week sometimes. Um, and as I kind of matured as a musician, changed how I practice, changed how I approach the horn, now I rarely have a day where I feel like my embouchure is so out of shape that I just can't get work done. The question might be, how do we get there? How do we get it so rather than having one or two bad days a week, we maybe only have one or two bad days a month, or maybe even one or two bad days every six weeks or two months? A couple things that we can do to help us move in this direction. All right, thing number one we can do to help us have a more consistent relationship with how our embouchure feels. This is to stop doing a 45 minute daily routine. Now this might go against some conventional wisdom that you might hear from other brass teachers or other places on the internet, but for me, changing how I think about this daily routine has really dramatically improved my playing. My quote unquote daily routine or my warm up time takes me no more than 10 minutes. If I'm thinking I'm beyond that 10 minutes, now I might still practice some technical exercises, um, things to develop my tonguing, my upper register, all the different areas that we're playing. However, that's not really my warm up or daily routine. I want my routine to be something that I can do if I'm practicing at home and playing for the first time of the day, if I'm teaching, if I'm out doing a clinic, if I'm at a gig, uh, no matter what, I wanna be able to have that consistency um, of the same thing every time before I play. Now, if that's 45 minutes, that's gonna be pretty tough to get in every time before I play. So I want it to be short and efficient. Okay, just to demonstrate this, I'm gonna play through my entire daily routine right now. Now, you're not gonna to have to sit here for 10 minutes. I'm gonna put a little clock up in the corner here and you're gonna see it's gonna go by super fast motion. I'm gonna stop um, in just a few places where you can actually hear what I'm doing just to kind of see um, what type of exercises I consider in this daily routine part of our practice. But you're gonna see that it's gonna take right around 10 minutes to get through all of these exercises. So let's check it out. All right, so that clocked in just a little bit under 10 minutes. And what were the key concepts in that? Long tones 
and lip slurs. Nothing revolutionary for sure. I like to do very, very straightforward, relatively simple things for my warm up. So again, I can do this in any setting. Again, whether I'm at home, whether I'm warming up before a gig, maybe whether I have to have a practice mute in if I'm warming up in a space where I can't be super loud. Um, I wanna be able to do that same thing every time before I play. And if it is too long of a kind of group of exercises, it's gonna be really difficult. Now, again, that's not to say I don't practice other stuff that are kind of fundamentals. I work on range, articulation, um, maybe different scale patterns, all this type of stuff, but I don't really consider that part of my warm up or my daily routine. That's part of practice. And just this kind of mental distinguishing of like, what is a daily routine, what is warm up, and what is practice is really important because what happens is we get really accustomed to being like, oh, I've got to get my daily routine in for my arm sure to feel good. And then in the situations where we can't get that routine in, which we'll all face on a fairly regular basis if we're busy working musicians, we suddenly don't feel good because we don't have that consistency that we're used to. And so I encourage you to try to feel like you can shorten up this routine. I really like about 10 minutes, but I had to work to that. There was a time where my routine was maybe more like half an hour. And when I shrunk it down to 10 minutes, I don't know that I really noticed any decrease in my technical ability or facility or anything like that. It was all kind of like in my head because certainly after five or 10 minutes of playing, your muscles are plenty warmed up and ready to play. So a lot of it is mental when we're thinking about shortening this daily routine or warm up time in our practice. All right, the next thing we can do to help us have a more consistent and hopefully good embouchure feel from day to day doesn't happen at the beginning of our playing, happens at the end of our playing for the day. I am someone who swears by a warm down. Now, what do I mean when I talk about a warm down? Um, I do this every day when I'm done playing for the day. I play a few long tones in the low register. I play a few maybe easy, very easy lip slurs just to kind of get some blood moving in my face and to really focus on allowing the embouchure to vibrate rather than forcing it to vibrate. By the end of the day, your embouchure might be feeling a little tired, so you might be kind of like forcing it to work the way you want to rather than just allowing it to vibrate. So this might be as simple as something like this. and so on and so forth down the horn. I might also do a very easy long tone exercise, relatively soft, maybe with no tongue, all glisses. I'm not even necessarily worried if my sound is great or I'm getting super centered notes. I just want to feel like the air is moving in a relaxed fashion through the aperture and my lips are vibrating because of that air. I'm not forcing them to vibrate. This kind of gets everything feeling nice and loose. And the next day when I come back to it, usually everything's feeling a little bit better. This is especially important if I've had a particularly taxing day, um, maybe just a lot of playing or particularly taxing performance. The final thing I want you to think about when you're thinking about how do I increase the number of good days I have on my horn is thinking about the other habits that are in your life. How much sleep do I get? What did I eat for lunch or dinner? What kind of exercise am I getting? What's my mental state in? These are all really, really important and they affect our playing in a big way. The better you get, the more you're gonna realize that most of the challenges you face playing wise are actually you know, in between your ears, in your head, not really on the horn. So all of these other things really have a big effect. One thing that can affect you on the horn in this way is the amount of rest you're getting, both sleeping and getting good just rest for your body, but especially rest for your embouchure. Brass players are the worst out of all musicians about feeling they've gotta get that daily grind. Yeah, a lot of it is that, and I emphasize that to my students as well, that you have to have a consistent relationship with this instrument for it to work because we are the thing that is creating the vibrations. However, this can work against us if we're going through a period of a lot of practice, not a lot of rest, maybe not good other habits in the rest of our just healthy lifestyle um, that wear and tear accumulates. 
And so try to plan in maybe having a day off sometimes. Um, if I can, I love to take one day, not completely off a week, sometimes completely off, but I maybe I just go through a warm up and maybe play a tune and call that good. Maybe 20 minutes of playing. So I get a little contact with the instrument, but at the same time, I'm not really fatiguing my embouchure so those muscles can rest. Inevitably, when I come back to it the next day, I feel so much better. So rest cannot be overemphasized with both our bodies and our embouchures. All right, I hope you try to incorporate some of these things into your practice. Remember, we wanna think about shortening that daily routine. I have about 10 minutes, but you know, if we can shy away from having that 45 minute daily routine, that can really do some wonderful things for our playing. Secondly, we wanna think about what we do at the end of our playing. Do we warm down? Do we go straight from playing a high B flat at triple F and then put the horn right into the case? Or do we play a few exercises to get the muscles kind of relaxed and feeling good for tomorrow? And then finally, we want to think about how the rest of our kind of lifestyle affects what happens on the horn. Are we getting enough sleep? Do we have a reasonably good diet? Are we drinking enough water? All these things really have big effects when we go to play our instrument. All right. Happy practicing, everybody.